Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank. As the drum beats, dancers sway their hips and tap their feet. With passion and grace, their bodies move, synchronized with the rhythm of Sega. Sega music is my breath. It's my air, it's my oxygen, it's everything, because it, it runs in the blood. And it's a pride, because it's my heritage. It's an identity steeped in history, one of slavery, of suffering, of freedom. This is the heartbeat of Mauritius. This is Inside Africa. Nestled in the Indian Ocean sits the island of Mauritius, a country no more than 45 kilometers wide and 65 kilometers long. Blessed with sweeping vistas and enticing waters, it lures tourists from around the world, welcoming them to a melting pot of cultures. Mauritians have a diverse heritage, interwoven with threads from Africa, India, China and France. Theirs is a rich tapestry a collision of colors and cultures that's reflected in their Creole language and food. We, with the mixture here, with a melting pot, our cuisine has mixed everything. For me now, Creole is a state of mind and a way of living with a mixture of all cultures. It has also made its way into the rhythm and beats of the island. Lindsay Backbot grew up feeling these sounds in her soul. I think the first time I ever sang was in the rooms. And my childhood is so great because my parents, great parents, they all singing, musicians. It was her grandfather who properly introduced her to Sega, the music of Mauritius. I was really young hearing the Sega, and it's everything, it's my pride, my identity. My grandfather was playing in a Sega group, so every parties in Mauritius you do have Sega. If there was no Sega, there was no party. Often referred to as the blues of the Indian Ocean, its tempo, similar to 6-8, is also found in traditional music from other islands in the region. Percy Yiptong is heavily involved in the Sega music scene. Sega music, I think, for every Mauritian, as it's our national music, we're born into it. We can be of African origin, Chinese, Indo or European origin. Sega is our rhythm. It is the music that unites all religion and communities. If you don't have any idea of what is Sega music, if I have to explain to you, it's so simple. Somebody want to try? You need your hands. <laughs> and yeah, I think I'll do it like this. There you go. It's the rhythm is like this. That's that's the rhythm of it. And all you need is just that shoulder and the smile and the hips and the feet. That's all you need actually. The minute you hear that sound, it just gonna take you because it's it's like air. Like coming to Mauritius, you see the, the beaches, you're like, ah, oh, it's going to have the same effect. <laughs> Still have to hear the beat. As long as you hear this, everything is fine. That means we can help. <laughs> Each of the instruments not only provide a unique sound, but are historically crafted by hand. We have three main instruments in the Sega. So we have the ravan, which is a circle of wood covered with goat skin. But you have to heat the dead skin with the fire to make it alive. That's the heartbeat of Mauritius. Everything is around this ravan. And then you have the high pitch of the triangle. And then we give you that ting, 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 
you know that's the high pitch and then you have the other one give you the the swing it's called the maravani you know it's a rectangular shape of wood covered with sugarcane stems and inside you have dry seeds called sipai and then you just wave it with the rhythm that's my favorite especially the sound of it reminds me of the waves of the sea and that's the three main instrument of the traditional sega Today, Sega is the music that greets those who visit the island. As a professional singer, Lindsay serenades guests with her strong voice and heartfelt lyrics. When tourists arrived, they had to find a way to entertain the tourists. How about putting the Sega? Ha uh ha, -huh. because tourists come and want to see something special what belongs to Mauritius and the first thing, yes, food, but also the music. So they find a proper way um, to promote our Sega. So Sega was played in every hotel. Theatrical and powerful, this performance reveals the true origins of Sega. Lindsay's feet barely lift the ground. The lyrics, soulful, mournful, expressive, the music tells the story of Mauritius's past, a period of history which has shaped its identity today, a time when slaves were brought to work on the island. The Morn Mountain, an imposing monolithic formation rising from the sea. Situated in the southwest tip of Mauritius, it overlooks lush landscapes and the expanse of the Indian Ocean. Ishwar Viren works as a guide, navigating his way along the dusty tracks. In 2008, this site was rewarded UNESCO World Heritage status, a place deemed worthy of preservation, not just for its natural beauty, but its historical role too. Centuries ago, this rugged rock became a fortress for runaway slaves, also known as Maroons, and in later years was recognized as the birthplace of Sega music. He said that the Maroon were living in a colony on the top of the Moon Mountain, which mean more than hundreds, and they were living with wife, husband, and parents, and with a chief on the top of Limon Mountain. Slaves were first brought to the island from Madagascar in 1639, a year after the Dutch East India Company established a settlement here. They brought little with them, but still had their memories and their music. At the beginning, there were about 105 slaves on the island during the Dutch colonialism. And then during the French period, up to 1810, we had about 90,000 slaves here. Then the, the French left and we had the English coming. And uh, there, there was a consequent drop uh, to 60,000 slaves. As the slave population fluctuated, so too did their country of origin. During the French period, this uh, network was extended to the East African coast. About 45% uh, of the slaves were taken from the East African coast and uh, approximately 2-3% from uh, West Africa, from uh, the island of Gori in Senegal and about 40% from Madagascar. They were forced to work on the tobacco and sugarcane plantations and ordered to cut down ebony trees. Life was very hard for them. They always had chains and weights and they were beaten up if they rebelled. That's why they, some of them chose to escape. 
those who did managed to escape to different places on the island. But it was Le Mans Mountain that provided a unique place of refuge. Le Mans isolated nature where there was less development in this particular area and the topography of the site makes Le Mans almost inaccessible and it was considered as a safe place. It, it, it attracted lots of slaves, even from the northern part of the island. It's believed the escaped slaves positioned themselves at the summit, using a tree trunk to bridge what is known as the V-gap. For them, this place was like a viewing point. Why? Because from here, they can see all around. Was there someone? The police is coming toward them to capture them. At night, they will get down, they will go hunting, they will go fishing. At the foot of the mountain, by the banyan tree, they'd express themselves through a unique musical style rooted in their suffering, Sega. What the slaves were expressing through the music was a lot of pain. It was also a calling or a call from the home. It was that rhythm and the language to express, you know, everything what unsaid, everything um, deep down. I guess even though if you go back to the days, not only to Mauritius, around the world, slavery have that soul, the pain of the soul and the, the enjoyment, the, the everything, everything, if I may say. Their dancing evoked the shackles they once wore. The slaves find an amazing way and sexier way to dance the Sega. Even though they were in pain, even though they were singing their sufferings, they created the steps and the movements of the Sega. They had chains in their feet and bullets, sometimes in the neck or maybe chained in the hands. But the rhythm carries them. The thing is, the feet stays on the ground. Whatever you're doing. For them, Sega music was a way in which to liberate their minds and spirits. Yet living on top of Le Mans meant that in February 1835, they were unaware slavery had been abolished. To alert them, the colonial authorities sent soldiers wearing uniforms up the mountain. They went there, dressed officially with the guns, to announce them freedom, hello, and they rather jump from this mountain, kill themselves, because they thought they were going back to slavery, back to torture, back to what they had before. Yeah. But they jumped. Ah. For years after slavery ended, Sega music was cast aside. Since Sega was sang in Creole, it was, I think that, that's why it was not forbidden, but looked down. It was rude or stupid or idiot or dumb. As Sega has emerged in popular culture, Le Mans Mountain has come to represent the slaves who chose death over the chains of slavery. The mountain became really special because it's about a freedom thing, freedom of a mind, of spirit, of body and soul, of everything. It's being preserved by the Le Mans Heritage Trust Fund because we want people to discover this place. What role it, it played in the cultural transmission of knowledge till now, which has influenced our, our way of life. So each different places in Le Mans are very important to interpret the history of the past. Monuments at the base of Le Mans pay tribute to the island's difficult past and the birthplace of Sega music. It is our pride today because the mountain where everything started with the slave today is the uh, world heritage. And it's not a coincidence that our traditional Sega is a world heritage today. So 
th there is the connection. It, it had to happen for the world and even for Mauritius to realize that we do have two precious things here and everything is about the slaves. But for their memory to stay alive requires passing Sega music onto the next generation. I love playing the Ravan because of the music. Since I was little, I've loved making music and I want to develop. I hope to continue and never stop. On the west coast of Mauritius, Percy Yiptong plays the Ravan, a traditional instrument rooted in the sound of Sega. Sega music comes from slavery. Sega was born on the sufferings to become now to become um, a celebration music, a party music, and not only for the slaves' uh, descendants, but for all Mauritians. It is important to preserve Sega because it is our traditional national music. This is the only music really that unifies everyone with the Creole language. So if Sega should one day go fade out, maybe the unity of Mauritius will also fade out. It is essential that it never dies. In an attempt to keep the beat of Sega music alive, Percy is involved in an educational program in a neighboring village. So now we're in Black River, and in fact, Black River is known as the cradle of Sega music in the slavery days. Because when the, the uh, slavery was abolished, most of the African slaves settled in Black River. This is one of the rare, rare Sega schools teaching Ravan. Reviving this tradition has provided the children here with much more than just a musical skill. Most of the children have social problems. In this area, in like most um, suburbs and small villages on the coast, there's a big rate of alcoholism, drugs, um, teenagers, teenager girls get pregnant, but all the kids normally, they roam around on the streets. So this allows them to gather together and the children say themselves, they learn discipline, because to beat the rhythm, you have to be in the, everyone together. So it learns them to work in group. And by working in group, this brings solidarity in the community. The children don't fight anymore. Instead, they play with each other. There's a friendship between them. They play together and have become friends through that. They don't argue. Instead, they stay together, talking and laughing. What is important with Ravan School, we keep them, the traditional instrument alive. Sega won't die. The dance and the music won't die. But coming back to the goat skin and the real drumming, you keep your roots rooted, and especially in Black River where it was born. Embracing history ensures tomorrow's generation appreciate their cultural heritage. <laughs> But to stay relevant and share SEGA on a global level has required an evolution. SEGA, a mixture of SEGA and reggae, envelops the crowd. This is the seventh edition of the Reggae Danza Festival in Mauritius. Sege artist Bruno Raya has worked hard to spread the musical genre across the Indian Ocean. This is 100% Mauritian. It's crucial for us to promote this music. It really is important. It was in the 1980s that an artist known as Kaya first fused the two genres and was discovered by music producer Percy. He was playing reggae. That's why he's called Kaya, because he did a lot of covers of Bob Marley, including the Kaya song. So everybody nicknamed him Kaya, Kaya, Kaya. And then he started doing his own reggae in Creole. And then he started mixing it with Sega music. 
because reggae is, as I said, two beat, and with the Sege, it is the same rhythm of Sega, only with the heavy bass of reggae and the one drop and the skank of reggae. Chanking, 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 do 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 do. But Sega is chiki chiki chiki. -chi. So the beat is faster, and I was convinced that Sege can also conquer the world. It took a few years for Sege to take off in Mauritius, but when it did, it became a symbol of harmony, a musical style bringing together people of all colors and faiths. You cannot speak of Sege without talking of Sega, and how we have always said there are only two types of music that are owned by Mauritians. One was born out of the time of slaves, and the other one after independence. Artists like Bruno and Lindsay Backbot believe Sege has an international appeal, and by promoting it on the big stage, they hope to keep the memory of Sega alive, paving the way for it to be shared with the rest of the world. Sega is our pride, it's our um, identity, and Sega, it's this beautiful evolution, the passport to uh, open doors to elsewhere. And there's so many young, young youngsters that love, you know, Sega music, and this is their door open to there. From the chains of slavery to unifying a multicultural community, Sega music has come to embody so much of what makes up this little island in the Indian Ocean. It's the heart, the soul, the spirit. It's been a fight. So we, we're looking forward for the future. We're looking for evolution. It is so important because that's our identity. If you want to make a difference in the world, you have to start believing in yourself. So if I want to start believing in myself, I have to look and say, Sega is mine. Born out of a painful past, it has become a celebration of diversity and equality. A musical sound that pumps through the veins of the people who call this home. Mauritius is not only about beautiful hotels, it's not only about lagoons or beaches or the sun. Mauritius, first of all, is about the people. It's about the melting pot. It's about the beauty, how different people can connect together. We're blessed people. Everywhere you go, you'll see a smile on your face and a heartbeat. Our soul will stay Sega Music. Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank.